It's an honor to be here today to be able to share the word. And the message, my, the title of my message today is Heavy Lifting. So please stand with me while we read the word of God together. Today's main scripture can be found in Matthew chapter 11. It's going to be verses 28 through 30. These are the words of Jesus. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Church, would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that's in your word and we thank you for the authority that your word carries, God. I am asking that you would open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears to see and hear what you want us to learn and to walk away with today. Holy Spirit, I also ask that you would minister to the hearts of those here today who are carrying a heavy burden and do what only you can. We trust this in your mighty name, King Jesus. Amen. You may be seated, church. So, hey, does anyone in the room lift? And I mean weights, not the rideshare service. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, here's a video of a guy that looks just like I used to when I used to live. <laughs> oh, yep, that was me. I looked just like that guy one time. I was on a business trip up in uh, upstate New York and I found a gym to go to. And because I was visiting, I didn't know anybody. So I didn't want to ask for a spotter. So I made the decision to do this on my own. Well, the outcome was exactly what we just watched. So yeah, <laughs> it's, easy, it's easy to laugh and to say, hey Rob, what's wrong? Why couldn't you have just asked somebody? I mean, what would have been the big deal? But listen to me, before you start casting judgment, all right? I want you to think of this scenario in a different situation. When, we, when you and I, when we carry these heavy burdens and they're weighing us down to the point of sometimes break, don't you feel just like that guy? I mean, it's true, right? Think about it. I mean, we think that we can carry the load and we don't ask for any help. We don't tell anybody what's going on. We don't ask for any prayer. We just keep carrying that load until we get to the point and put ourselves in a dangerous position, just like that guy. And sometimes we take it too far to the point of actually breaking. Have you guys ever felt that weary or heavy burden? Okay. <clears throat> so you could be sitting here right now and be like, Rob, you have no idea. I'm carrying like the weight of my shoulders, the weight on my shoulders of the world. And I could break at any given time. Or perhaps you're sitting here with the burden of like a medical diagnosis. You've been given for yourself or a loved one. And you're going through it and you have no idea what the end result's going to be. You wake up every morning and you don't know how you're even going to make it through the day. And you feel tired and you feel scared and alone. Or perhaps parents, maybe you're carrying a burden for your children. Maybe they've gone astray from God and they've gotten tied up into the things of the world. And it just kills your heart to watch your child walk away from God. And you're grieving inside each day. Or parents, perhaps it's, it's your kids have just gone off to college for the first time. And you're dealing with the burden of trying to live with them letting go. And what's it going to be like without my kid being here every day? Or maybe it's your marriage. Mm. You could be sitting here extremely overburdened. Because it feels like God just couldn't heal all that's gone wrong in your relationship with your spouse. Or maybe it's the opposite. You could be here carrying the burden that I'm looking for my forever partner and I just can't seem to find them. And each day you're like, God, when's it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen for me? And that kind of weighs you down. Or perhaps you're sitting here and you're thinking, Rob, okay, I'm carrying a burden. None of them are as serious as what you're saying. And if that's your case, I'm happy for you. That's great, because we're all in different seasons. But is it possible, is it possible 
that you could be carrying a burden today that's interfering with your relationship with Jesus and you don't even know it. Such as the burden of feeling like you need to be somebody that you're not because you think nobody would accept you if they knew the real you. Or perhaps you're carrying around shame and it's weighing you down because you feel like you could never be loved if anybody really knew what you did or if they knew that the thoughts, those deep, dark thoughts that you battle with daily. Or perhaps you're just dealing with guilt and the thought of dealing with it is so scary you've just buried it alive. Mm, condemnation. What about that burden? You mess up, you beat yourself up so bad, you don't need any enemies because you're your worst enemy. Eunuchs, you have a hard time struggling to receive Jesus' forgiveness and his grace. And that's a heavy burden to carry. If anyone here today can relate <clears throat> with any of these burdens, listen, I want to encourage you. He sees you, okay? He sees you. You're not abandoned. You're not all alone. It just might feel that way right now, but he has you in the palm of his hand and he is walking through this with you. He sees you, you're not alone. I need you to hear the voice of Jesus today in this scripture, okay? Because he's inviting all of us who's burdened, who's heavy laden to come to him. And he's promising us rest rest for our souls. But in order to do that, we need to be willing. He's instructing us to live a life that's yoked with him, which means joined together, and to learn how to live a life that he says we will find rest for our souls, even in the face of adversity. And if Jesus says that this life is possible, then we know it's true. And if it's true, it's a promise that we can hold on to. Just like we were just saying, yes, it's a promise, and we anchor ourselves in that promise during the times of adversity. So please, hear what Jesus is speaking to you today. But what does it look like for us to partner with Jesus, to live that life that he's saying is available to us that's light and easy to bear? This is what I want us to learn here today, okay? Our rest requires work. I'm going to repeat that. Our rest requires work. And you might say, Rob, well, what, does, what does that mean? And I'm glad that you asked. Because let's jump in and discover how we can obtain this promise that Jesus is offering to us today. Are you ready? Point number one. Jesus is my spotter. Okay, unlike my experience in New York, when I was in my hometown gym, I knew everybody, so it didn't matter. It was easy for me to ask someone to spot me and it, when I wanted to make a heavy lift. However, I still needed to go to go ask that person for help. You with me? And when I'm asking that spotter to come spot me, I'm asking them to be in my presence and to jump in and help me in my time of need. But that takes action on my part to go get the spotter. In the same exact way, we must go to Jesus to activate our rest. Jesus says, come to me. And what I want us to see here is, is, is that Jesus is giving us a choice. We need to make the choice, y'all. Before, when I used to read this scripture, I used to see it as Jesus inviting us, and, and to an extent he is. But as I meditated more on the scripture, I started to see it also as a command of instruction, okay? He's telling us to come to him. And when I'm telling my kids to come to me, I'm not suggesting that they come. I'm telling them to come. I'm sure all the parents in the room can relate with me on that one. But just my kids have to obey whether or not they're to come to me, right? So just like they have a choice, we have a choice. He's calling us to him, but it's up to us to choose to obey. So the first step for us to find rest is, is we must first respond to his command to come and then actually go. You with me so far? All right, cool. Jesus didn't say, you stay there and I'll come to you. He said, come to me, okay? So let's move on. 
in addition to a spotter in the gym when they're helping you in your time of need, a good one's also going to encourage you and will challenge you to go to the next level. They're going to try to get you to push that next rep up. They're going to try to get you to break through that breaking point so that you can grow. And of course, it's difficult, but once we break through that pain, painful spot, the gains are, the gains are so much more worth it. Um, in, in this one statement that Jesus was saying to the people of the day, come to me, he was challenging them out of their comfort zone. He knew that there was more for them, and he was challenging them to come and experience a different life than what they were used to. Because see, religion, example by the spiritual leaders of the day, was burdensome, and it was heavy to bear. See, and um, they followed these rules and these regulations instead of pushing into a close, personal, intimate relationship with God. But Jesus wanted the people to discover there's more. And if they, he, if they partnered with him, and they learned his ways, and they followed after him, he was challenging them to come out of their comfort zone to experience this rest. Their comfort zone of religion was completely different than what he was presenting. And if they obeyed it, then they would receive that rest. And just like a good spotter, Jesus challenges us too. He challenges us beyond our comfort zone. He challenges us beyond life as we know it. See, when my kids get heavy burdened, um, I've noticed that they withdraw and they carry the burdens all within on themselves. And I'm trying to teach them that as their father, I love them unconditionally. And that I, um, I don't want them to think that my love changes for them when they disobey. So even if they go against my instructions, even if we experience um, anger and we get upset with one another, at the end of the day, we always choose to love one another. Right, guys? And that's an important point. Because for children that have experienced abandonment in their lives, that's a really difficult concept to not only understand, but to accept. So I'm challenging them to think beyond what they knew in their past and embrace a new way of living, which is better for them. You following? And when there's even a disagreement between us, many times I'll be like, okay, well, when you're ready to talk about it, come to me. And I say that because I know it's not good for them to deal with their, their pain and their disappointment alone. See, as, as a father, I want to calm their anxiety. I want, it to, um, I want to comfort their pain. I want to build them up and strengthen them to persevere in life. As their father, it's my desire to do all that. But in order for me to do it, first there's re action required on their part. They must come to me. My kids will tell you, um, it's not easy all the time, but when they do do it, they experience a release and a greater sense of peace when they can lay that burden down with someone that they know loves them and will walk it through with them. Does that make sense? See the facts surrounding their circumstances that caused the burden, it might not change, and ours might not either. But there is a level of rest and comfort that we experience just knowing that we're not going through it alone. All this is available to my kids when they come to me, their father. So, what area in your life is Jesus being a good spotter, and he's pushing you beyond your comfort zone? If it's difficult, I want you to ask yourself this question. What would it look like if what God's calling me to do, I responded in obedience with a yes? Think about it. Could it possibly change and take you to the next level of your relationship with Jesus? Perhaps Jesus is encouraging you today to be vulnerable and share your burdens with another brother or sister. And that might be, like, really difficult and scare you to death. And guess what? I understand that because that's exactly how I was, too. It was difficult for me to learn to be transparent. But you see, he wants to lighten our burden. Many times he ministers to us through other people. So God's desire for the church is to carry one another's burdens. And that requires work on our part. First, we need to be transparent and open. And then we need to be responsive as well to help one another out. James 5 tells us that confess our sins to one another and pray for one another. But how many of us actually really do that? And if we do, do we do it on the regular? Like this is part of our daily walk with Jesus. We need to be willing to get involved in each other's lives and be willing to be vulnerable and worship. 
And we need to show up for our collectives and be active participants. And if you're a guest here with us today and you're like, well, what is a collective? Here at Fervent Collectives are groups of 20 plus people where we get together and we care for one another, we challenge each other, we enjoy each other's company, we basically do life together. And if you're interested in joining one of those, there'll be more information about that next week. <clears throat> so our rest requires work on our part, and Jesus will be our spotter in the process. Are you with me? All right, let's, let's move on to point number two. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number two, Jesus is my partner. Back when I was training in the gym, I had a workout partner that we worked out daily together. And um, in the beginning, I relied on him to help me learn the train properly. And as I grew in knowledge and experience, I was seeing results in my workouts. I was growing in size as well as in endurance. And, and what once seemed like it was difficult, I then learned was not so difficult as I continued this process. So I attributed all that to having a good training partner and going through it with me daily. In the same way, Jesus desires to have this partnership with us as well. So let's look back at our scripture for a minute, okay? The first step was me responding to Jesus' command to come to him, right? Now, he's asking me to be yoked with him and to learn from him. Jesus says this, take my yoke upon you and let me teach you. Do you see that there's another choice here that needs to be made? The choice this time is, is that we need to submit to him, surrender our ways, and allow him to teach us a new way of doing life together with him instead of on our own. So what does it look like to be yoked with Jesus? I mean, that's not really like a common phrase that we use in today's language, right? So here's, a, here's an image to help me illustrate it better. I got this image from Christianity.com as, as well as the definition, but you can see the two oxen up here, right? See the, the bar that goes across joining the two of them? That's the yoke and it was made of wood and it was hand carved to fit the neck and the shoulders of the animal to prevent pain or discomfort for the animal. With a central ring, as you can see the ring in the middle, was for hitching the team to a cart, plow, or any other load. Two oxen are chosen to share a yoke, but get this part, guys. The first is an older seasoned ox. He's trained and he's hardy from years of routine. The second is a new young ox, and he has potential, but he's inexperienced. But by sharing the same yoke with a veteran workhorse, the elder trains the young one. Not only that, but the experienced one draws harder to bear the majority of the burden. Since the older one leads, the younger ox don't have to worry about what to do because he learns from his mentor and he gains the knowledge and skill to teach others. How cool is that? I love this imagery that Jesus is using here. He's the seasoned ox, and we're the ones that need to be trained by him. And he does this by us entering into a partnership, and he brings us together, yokes us together as one. And he bears the majority of the burden because he's the one who's leading. But, but, in order for him to lead me and to carry the majority of the burden, I need to do something on my part because rest requires work, right? So what my action is here is allowing Jesus to lead. It's as simple as that. I need to activate my rest by submitting to him, surrendering my ways and allowing him to teach me his ways, which he says and promises will result in rest for my soul. The action of allowing Jesus to lead is actually really just releasing control to the one who's in control anyway. But for some reason we think that we are. And honestly, I think that that's why we have majority of the burdens that we carry, because we think that we need to do it ourselves. And um, the more that I'm thinking about it, actually, um, the heavier it gets. And hmm, I think I just better sit down for a few minutes. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. That's too far. Let me move up. Bear with me a minute, guys, while I move this couch up here. Ooh. Whoa, all right, maybe from here. Whoa, that's way, wow, that's way heavier than I thought. That's way heavier than I thought. Oh, hey, Pastor Mike, thank you. You wanna help me? <laughs> thank you, but I got it. 
I got this. I am so good. Yeah, I'm so good. I got it. <clears throat> nope, I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, oh my back. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh but I got to get it there. Hold on. Let me try it this way. Oh, no. <sighs> How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How can I do it? I've got to move it from there. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Pass the mic. I can't do this on my own. Will you help? Thank you. What do I need to do? What is this? Okay, like this? Yeah. Okay, now what? I'm gonna let you lead. Oh my gosh, look how much easier. And my back, my back's fine. It doesn't even hurt. Oh, then what, take those out? Okay. Mike, that was so much easier. Wow. Wow. Oh. Church, why do we find it so difficult to acknowledge our weaknesses? and humble ourselves to ask for help. Why is that so hard? See, this is what I believe Jesus wants us to learn here today. We weren't designed to carry our heavy burdens alone. See, first and foremost, he's the one that we run to. And that's what Jesus is teaching us in this scripture. It's him that we're yoked to. But as we live a life that's yoked to Jesus, we begin to understand and truly know what it means to love other people. Because that can only come from his instruction and his leading. See, he's the one who established the church. It's his church. And we're all an extension of him as the body of Christ. It's his intention that we would love one another as he loves us. In John 15, Jesus commands it to love one another as I have loved you. And if we really understood that, we shouldn't find it so difficult to be honest with one another and share our lives together and run to help another brother or sister. How many people in this room, by a show of hands, have needed someone to help you during the course of your life? Wow, look around, look around. So then don't you see how silly it is when we reject help, when almost everybody in this room has needed it at one time or another. Would you guys thank, thanks Pastor Mike with me for helping me with that illustration. I appreciate you, thank you. <laughs> So if our rest requires work, okay, I must be willing to submit to Jesus, surrender my ways, and allow him by taking upon, taking upon me his yoke. And then I must partner with him and allow him to show me his ways. And that may very well include humbling myself. And that may need to make me have to acknowledge that I need help. So once again, point number two, when heavy lifting, Jesus is my partner. Are you with me? Are you ready to move to the final third point? All right, let's move. Point number three, Jesus is my recovery. In verse 30, we read this. Jesus says, for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Notice that it doesn't say do nothing, okay? But what it does show us is, is that Jesus is gonna be the one to do the heavy lifting. When I was working out, there came a point where I began to overtrain. And that was because I simply didn't understand the concept of active rest. 
See, my lack of understanding began to hurt me because I became weaker instead of stronger. And in my mind, it, 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 taking a rest day looked like I wasn't going to do anything. And back then, I was not willing to do that. So in, in, um, once I had learned that active rest actually means that you're doing things that balance the load. So like on an off day, what I would do is um, light cardio. Or, or maybe on an off day, go for a walk. Or flexibility training. It was then that I learned and my, my strength started to increase. So the lesson that Jesus is teaching us here is very similar, okay? Our spiritual rest comes by doing. He says that his burden is light. So that means that he's going to do the heavy lifting. But that also means that we're going to do the light lifting. It doesn't mean that we sit and do nothing. And Pastor Mike referenced this last week in his sermon, um, where he mentioned that when we become burdened, our tendency is to um, retreat. Do you remember that? Okay, when actually the, the only thing that makes our burden is heavier. Because when we do that, we're shutting out the world and we're carrying it all on ourselves. So when we should really be looking for ways to serve others. And a few things that Pastor Mike mentioned last week was this, is that when we do that, we have a sense of purpose, a social connection, and it also um, distracts us from our negative thoughts. So if you guys can remember back during quarantine, we were all carrying our own heavy burdens because we were restricted from gathering, remember? And I'll be honest with you, I noticed in my own life that loneliness and depression increased. And that was because I was designed, we're all designed as God's body to be serving him as well as others. And that wasn't happening as frequent as it once used to. So I started to have that depression and that loneliness rise up. See, by, but when we do serve him, and we are serving one another, we're operating in our purpose, and Jesus gives us the rest that we need. And he does that by filling us with the power of his Holy Spirit. And when he does that, that comes from being yoked with him. And we accomplish the plans and purposes that he has for us. See, rest isn't about doing nothing. It's the exact opposite. It's when we partner with him and we follow in his ways, empowered by his spirit, and by serving others that we experience the place of rest that God intended for his people. Jesus is our recovery. We can only operate in our own strength for a period of time. But when we operate in the power of his spirit, when we partner with him and we're living life with him daily and keeping him at the center of it, that's when we're truly fulfilling our God-given purpose. And guess what? We won't grow weary doing good when we're walking in that manner. Guys, Jesus is our spotter. He's our partner. And he's our recovery. And he's giving us an invitation today Will you come? Will you come? We're going to partake in communion together at this time. So if you would take out your communion cups. And I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to respond to Jesus' invitation to come and to lay down your burden at the foot of the cross where it belongs. And I want to ask you to give him space to replace that burden with whatever the active rest is that he's calling you to do. So church, I want to give us some space to do that. So would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me?